Let's look at another expected value situation, uh, one that's not as straightforward. Uh, but what we're going to do is convert this information into a table, into a probability distribution, so that we can then calculate the expected value. And so this is related to playing the lottery, which many, I think, many uh, family members or if you're like mine have uh, older family members play the lottery. And so let's just assume in a simple case that uh, to win the lottery, you have to pick six numbers and the numbers are from 1 to 26. What you need to know, or at least just to do the calculation, is over here, is that if you're going to try to pick six numbers um, out of 1 through 26, what we learn is that uh, through other mathematics that there are 230,230 two, ways of selecting six numbers. So if someone's actually going to win, they have a 1 and 230,000 uh, uh, chance of winning. And so what we're looking at here in this lottery game is, let's say um, you pay a dollar, and what's going to happen when you play the dollar, you're going to lose on the expected, right? The probability of losing is 230,229 out of 230,230. And the chance you're going to win 50,000 what you're going to do one out of every 230 times, 230,000 times, um, this is how often that will happen. So to calculate the expected value, what you would do is you would take your x value times your p. It doesn't fit in here, but that's what you would put in here, that decimal value or the fraction, times 50,000 times that. And when you get that, you get a value of negative 0 0.078. What does this number mean? This means that this lottery is a loser, meaning that in the long run, you lose 78 cents each time you play. Because you might win once, in, you might win if you win the 50,000, but in general, you're going to lose this often. Right? This is a very simplistic way of thinking about it. Some lotteries have other uh, values you can win at, at certain rates, and you can look behind the lottery card to figure that out. But in this case, again, this is what we're looking at. So if you play, what does this mean? If you play this 100 times, let's say over 100 weeks, uh, you would expect to lose $78 out of that process. That's the expected value. So it's a loser, right? And that's why gambling is tough. Um, and then we look at one more uh, example, a little practice problem. This one's a little bit more complex, but let's think about a company estimates 3% of their products will fail after the original warranty period, right? And this is this extended warranty information that you offered many times. Uh, but within two years, um, within um, well, products will fail after the original warranty period, but within two years of the purchase with a replacement cost of $150. So if they want to make an offer, if they want to offer a two-year warranty, what price should they charge so that they at least break even with those, uh, with their cost. And so what we're looking at is this. We don't know what they're going to charge, but when we charge it, they charge that 97% of the time they make that money. Okay. Um, and then on the other case, they lose $150 every time they have to, someone has to use the warranty. And so whatever they charge minus 150, that's going to happen 3% of the time. And so what we're trying to calculate is we want their expected value to be zero. I mean, they're going to break even. So once you do, again, this is a little algebra here, C times this, distributive property gives you this. You combine like terms, that becomes 1, 97 cents and 3 cents, and then you solve for C. And what you get is $45. So if they want to break even with their warranty, meaning that 3% of the time people are going to use it, 97% of the time they won't, and that's what they'll take, the company charges $45, then they can expect to break even. Again, this is connected to these extended warranties that you're offered. The company knows this type of information, how often people will use it, the cost of it, what's the cost of repair on average, and so forth.